How's it going everybody? My name is John Hammond and welcome back to another YouTube tutorial. So I'm still showing off a little bit of Python. We're on the basics. Last time around we talked about data types. Now let's move into variables and input and output. So uh, variables, input, output. I'm just creating a new file, a new script to save all this stuff. And uh, keep in mind, we've already done output, right? We've already been able to run print statements. We've already displayed hello world. We looked at data. We were able to add stuff together. We had numbers and text. It was all cool, easy stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So let's print out, hey there, what is your name? And that's it. <laughs> that's really all I want. We just want it to have a program that will ask for your name, and then we'll just kind of conceptually go through the demonstrate and demonstrate uh, what all this stuff really is. We get that output, and now we want to get our input, right? So, output in Python is with the print statement, but input in Python can be with functions called input or raw input. So, input will only take integers as your input, as, as something that it will read in. Raw input will read in a string. So, in this case, since our program is asking for a name, <laughs> we're probably going to want to use raw input, because that data is going to be text. It's going to be a string, right? Right. Now, I've been running this stuff in the... Uh, sublime text kind of, I don't know, little IDE, I guess. I don't, I don't even know what to call it. I've, just, I've been running it through sublime text. But since now we're going to get input, we actually have to, you know, run it in the terminal so we can have both input and output. So, let's check out that raw input function. If I run this, it's going to have an error. It's going to have a problem when we try to run it in sublime text. So, we'll go ahead and run it within our terminal. I'm going to chmod our variable one. Now when we run variables output, it says, hey there, what's your name? And I'll say, my name is John. And the program closes because that's all we have so far. But let's give it a little bit more to do. We want it to say, print, hello there. It is nice to meet you. Real simple, of course. We run this, what's your name, John? It says, hey there, nice to meet you. Easy enough, but we want our program to greet us, right? We want to know who we are. This is where the idea of variables can come in. We've been looking at data already with a bunch of these data types of strings and numbers, but they've been constant. They've been literals. One isn't going to change. It's always going to be one. John isn't going to change. It's always going to be that value John. Variables can vary, hence the name. They're allowed to change. It can be x. x can equal 3. Or maybe later on, x can equal 4. Or x can equal 300. It doesn't matter. They can change their state. It's not a constant or a literal like John or 1 or any other straight data type. So, let's see how it works. We've been able to assign stuff, at least you've seen me try to assign things with that equals. We're assigning with that operator equals. We can now say name equals raw input. And it says, hello there, it's nice to meet you. We can have it say, you told me your name is print John. Oh, I'm sorry, we want to have it print the name, duh. Because that's the variable that we just read in. Now we run this. It says, hey there, what's your name? My name's John. It says, hello there, it's nice to meet you. You told me your name is John. Cool. I'm doing this all on separate lines right now. That's kind of gross, right? We can put these together. We can supply a another argument to print. We can give it name right there. It says, hello there, what is your name? My name is John. It says, hello there, it's nice to meet you, John. We can concatenate it on and then add more, just like we had been doing with the data before. We were string concatenating, adding strings together. 
He says, hello there. What is your name? Hello there. It's nice to meet you, John. Now, we can get more in-depth with this. We can say, what is your first name? Well, now, first name is what they're going to equal. And we can ask, what is your last name? And then we can get input for that as well. We can use last name as the variable we want to hold the value that is returned by raw input. Raw input will read in from us. And raw input can actually take an argument. Inside these parentheses, inside of our function call, we'll have an argument there. We can say, we can specify a prompt as a string. Say first name equals. I'll do the same thing for our last name. And you know what? Let's let's try to build a little profile for whoever we're actually interacting with. Let's have it say, "How old are you?" And now we'll have another variable to hold this information for us, right? Because we want to be able to keep track of it. We want to be able to get a little bit more information and display who who they, who they are, right? And age, age can equal input, because right now we just want an integer, right? And it can, of course, take in another prompt there. Then when we're done, we can have it print out. Let's say it's all done now. Let's get a new line. And then let's concatenate on a bunch of equal signs. Let's actually take one equal sign and multiply it by like 50. So it just looks like a, just looks like a big string of equal signs, right? Because we can do that. We can do that. We can use that operator in Python to take one piece of data, a string, and multiply it, just like we've been doing with numbers, right? And then we can print out last name We can, of course, use a comma as another argument to print statement. Or we can concatenate it on just like we were doing. We kind of have an option there. First name. Age. So now... We kind of have a little bit of output as to who this person really is. Hey there, what's your first name? John. Last name? Hammond. How old are you? I'm 19. And then we get all that information right back out to us, right? Let's add another uh, new line there and make it pretty. And here's an interesting thing. Because we're passing in last name and first name as arguments to our print statement or function right now, it doesn't have an issue. But keep in mind, age is an integer right now. This age string that's prompting it and displaying it is a string. If we were to concatenate this stuff, it'll work with last name and first name because it's a string plus a string, right? This string plus our last name, which we know is a string variable, because it's raw input, first name, string, first name, string variable, age, what's that going to do when it's a string plus an integer? Because we're just using input. Let's try and run this. First name, John, last name, Hammond, age 19. Whoa, we get an error here. Trace back, print age and age. And this error is actually really good to us. It tells us, hey, I can't concatenate a string and an integer, str and int. Well, we can, we can just convert this data, can't we? We're just, it's just all data, right? Let's make this a str. We can wrap that in an str, which is a function that will just cast this integer variable to a string. All it is is a function. It's just a function call. And now we've got a nice little profile report. Let's try and run this now. John Hammond, age 19. And it gives all my information out. Last name, Hammond, John, 19. Cool. Simple demonstration, right? Simple, simple stuff. Input and output and variables. Keeping track of the data. Manipulating the data with operators. It's everything that we've already learned so far. It's all just coming together. Is that, is that cool? Is that cool with you?
Because it's cool with me. Cool. All right. Thanks for being cool, guys. And I'll see you in the next tutorial.